The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue on our journey through the Sermon on the Mount. Recall last week our Lord addressed four precepts of the Torah law. He called us to live not just by the letter of the law, so like thou shalt not kill, meaning do not murder, but to go and live by the spirit of the law, reminding us that even words can kill, that anger can kill another person. Now our Lord turns to two conventional precepts, so common practices at the time in which he lived. Notice, though, that for Jews to follow these precepts was really contradicting what we heard in our first reading, which was from the Torah, the book of Leviticus. So here Jesus says, you've heard the commandment, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Or you've heard, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Our Lord, though, asks us again to go deeper. We all think, then, how at times we face injustice. How do we respond to that injustice? Do we respond with vengeance, retaliation, hatred? Our Lord says, no. Don't lower yourself. Remember who you are. Do not lose your dignity as a Christian. Live by that higher standard. Do what is good in the eyes of God. Always be charitable. With that, then, he gives three examples. Three examples that first hearing are difficult unless we understand their historical context. First, he says, if someone slaps you on your right cheek, well, to do that, a person generally would have to use the back of the right hand. This, in Jewish society, was a great insult to an individual. Keep in mind, though, that for the Jews, the right hand was to be used for good. So it is with the right hand that a person held the Passover cup. With the right hand, a person would cover his eyes and say the Shema. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. With the right hand, a person would read the Torah from right to left because the Jewish people write from right to left. To left. To sit at the right hand was to sit at the place of honor. So Jesus is saying, don't let a person who uses this hand for bad cause you to do the same. Instead, he says, give the other cheek, the left cheek. Now, for some reason, now with that, a person would have to use the back of the left hand. For some reason, in Jewish society, right hand was for good, left hand did bad things. 
Hence, in Latin, we have right dexter, left sinister. Hmm. As a left-handed person, I take great exception to all of this. And someday, I hope all of us left-handed people will have a class action suit against you right-handed people for all the discrimination we've faced in life, be that as it may. But what our Lord is saying is, don't do the same to that person, but give the other cheek. See if that person is going to go even further. Stop the person right in his tracks. Make him repent. So our Lord's saying, don't lose your dignity. Do what is right in the eyes of God. Do the good and be charitable. He goes on and he says, well, if someone wants to sue you over your tunic for some reason, like a payment, give him your cloak as well. Because to settle a lawsuit, one would have to go to the pagan Roman court, stand in front of a a pagan Roman judge, and take an oath to a pagan Roman goddess like Minerva, goddess of justice, or to Caesar. Jesus says, don't give in to paganism. Remember who you are. So give your cloak as well, but don't give in to paganism. Instead, keep your identity, do what is good, be charitable. Our Lord says, if you're pressed into service one mile, go two miles. The Romans could press anybody at will into service. Simon of Cyrene was pressed into service to help Jesus carry the cross. Imagine, any of us would probably feel thoughts of vengeance, retaliation, anger, even hatred if we were pressed into service. Jesus says, no, don't go just one mile, go two miles. Our Lord's saying to us, all these things are external. Don't let these thoughts of retaliation, vengeance, hatred enter your soul. As St. Paul says, the soul is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So to allow those negative ideas, the retaliation, the hatred, the vengeance, would make us a slave to that other person. All those things are external. We have to rise above it and preserve our soul. A good example, back in the early 1960s, shortly after the segregation laws changed in our country in certain states, Dr. Martin Luther King was still pursuing the civil rights marches and so on, which were peaceful marches. He was in Alabama, and there he was sitting in a restaurant with a couple of his colleagues planning a march. At that time, many of us remember restaurant tables had like a sugar canister, a glass canister filled with sugar. So this man came up to him, a white fellow, and he just stood and looked at him for a minute, and then he took one of those canisters and just poured it on his head. What would you have done? What would I have done? Dr. King just stood there motionless with his eyes shut, paused, and those seconds that can seem like an eternity. Then he looked up at the man and he simply said, God bless you. The man said nothing in return. He walked away. Who won? When we think about it, who won? Dr. King won. He didn't lower himself. He didn't respond in retaliation, vengeance, hatred. He won. And so, my brothers and sisters, we must take this lesson to heart, especially in the day and age in which we live. We need to control ourselves and remember our dignity. Do what is good in the eyes of God. Be charitable. After all, Jesus concludes this section of the Sermon on the Mount with the simple precept, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be. So that's a constant striving for each of us each day. Be perfect. Now with that said, we have the opportunity because Wednesday begins Lent. Ash Wednesday. We'll have ashes, of course, at the Masses, 645, 835, 15. But prepare yourselves ahead of time to be renewed during this time period. To help you do so, we have a couple of items for you. One is the Little Lenten Magnificat, So each day, there's a short meditation 
based on the gospel passage for the daily mass or Sunday mass readings. So you may take one per family, then if we have more on Ash Wednesday, you can take as many as you would like. Secondly, there's a new book out. It's called Celebrating a Holy Catholic Easter, a guide to the customs and devotions of Lent and the season of Christ's resurrection. Nice, simple book, lots of nice color pictures, written by my favorite Catholic author, me. It's, and it's available in our parish gift store if you would like a copy. Then also, the Knights of Columbus are releasing a new program for men. You do not have to be a knight, just a man, because the idea is that men's spirituality is sometimes forgotten. And we need men, again, especially in the day and age in which we live, to be like a Saint Joseph to others, but especially to their loved ones. So this is a 12-part series. You can find a flyer at the entrance tables. It's 12 weeks, so we will meet at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning for coffee and donuts, 7.30. There's a short video, like 10, 15 minutes, and then there's really a discussion outline. We'll wrap it up so there's time for morning mass at 8.30 if you can attend. So I'd encourage all men of the parish to come out this Saturday to find out. To show you how important it is for us, Father Shear, myself, are going to be there. So we're committing ourselves to this, so hopefully you men will do that also. Now, with all of that said, you know that if we're beginning Lent and Ash Wednesday, it is time for the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. So, we go from the Sermon on the Mount to the Sermon of the Amount. So, first, a letter from our Bishop. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bishop's Lenten Appeal BLA, supports the work of our diocese to provide spiritual, charitable, and educational support to men and women and children in our parishes and on our campuses. The theme for this year's appeal is steadfast in faith and joyful in hope. This theme reminds us of Mary's yes to God and her unwavering trust in his divine plan for her. We too can say yes to God by sharing our talents, gifts, and resources with those in need. I respectfully ask you to consider making a gift to this year's BLA. All BLA donations are treated as restricted gifts and are used for the sole benefit of the programs and ministries intended. Please know of my sincere gratitude to all of you who have given in the past to this appeal. In a few moments, your beloved pastor will guide you through the pledging process. Be assured of my prayers for you and your families. Sincerely in Christ, Michael Burbage, Bishop of Arlington. With that said, I'm sure many of you have received the correspondence in the mail. We had a flyer in the bulletin a couple of weeks ago. I do encourage you to give to the appeal, just as I do every year, for one major reason, the education of our seminarians. We are blessed. We have 49 men studying to be priests in our diocese, three of whom are in our parish. How wonderful it is that Joe Machetto, who is going to be ordained a priest in this year, was part of the very beginning in the year 2000. To me, that's a great delight. I can't express my happiness because of that. And so we think of this, that every one of those seminarians is being educated. You all know, many of you from your own kids, that higher private education costs fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. Same for seminary education. We'll multiply that by 49. So 20% of this appeal goes to our seminarians. So we ought to support that. Remember that these men can't be ordained and have this huge debt, loans, and so on. So the diocese pays for that. Remember, too, they're giving their lives for you. They may be priests, God willing, for 50 years serving this diocese. For you, your children, your grandchildren, we should support them.
So for no other reason, we have we should give to this appeal. Now with that, as the bishop said, I have to lead you through the pledging process. And it's not easy. At times I feel punched down, deflated. Don't feel punched down. I am here to help you, the Pillsbury Doughboy. I will make you rise to the occasion. We will have a recipe for success, oh beloved pastor, Monami good friend, bosom buddy, and fellow baker, so I will help you by reading the directions. Oh, good, here we are. Great. All right, so as your pastor, I want to thank all of you who have already pledged this year to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal, as well as those who have given in past years. The Bishop's Lenten Appeal is something that I strongly believe each of us should support. Every donation, no matter how small, is important. Please know that all the monies collected for the appeal go to the programs and ministries as intended. At this time, we will be passing out the pledge envelopes. So at the end of the pew, please pass down an envelope for every family to complete each family. That's right, every, every family. And I look around, I see many friends. I see Aubrey over there, and I see Margaret McIntosh. There's Aiden McIntosh, too. Oh, there's Sherry Fuller. I see her. Oh, there's Tony Soma. He's there, too. Oh, who's over here? Oh, oh, Barbara Goodwin's there. Oh, goody. Here we are. Oh, Thomas Hansen's there. Yes, Ooh, lots of friends here. So we're going to have a good collection because I can count on my friends. <laughs> so as I ask you now to pause and reflect on how you can make a truly sacrificial pledge to this appeal to the best of your ability, I realize that each of us has different circumstances and the amount of our donation is un- of your donation is unique to your own financial situation. However, We all have the responsibility to support our diocesan church. Please pause. Ooh, this is like waiting for dough to rise, except it's money. Okay, our goal is that we could achieve 100% participation from our parish to the BLA. Every gift is important. And if we don't make our goal, someone's going to get his buns burned. (laughs) Yes. I will ask, walk us quickly through the pledging process so that everyone can complete the form together. By doing so, it actually takes less time and allows me to pace us so we can all finish in just a few minutes. And I will read the directions for you. Pause and make sure that everyone has received a pledge envelope and pencil. Pay special attention to people in the narthex or the choir loft, because they're really sneaky, you know. Yes, once everyone has an envelope, continue with the script. Now, please find a pen or pencil, open the flap, and find the pledge section inside. Pause and wait until about half of those participating are looking back at you. Go ahead. Okay. On the first line, write your name. Your name, not your neighbor's name. Your name, your address your telephone number. Please write the name of our parish on the small line on the left side. That's our parish. So if you're sitting here as a visitor, it's our parish, it's our pew, we count on you. So pause a few seconds. One, two, three, four, five, go. Okay. Oh, if you are already contributing to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal by mail or online, please check that box on the center of the pledge envelope to avoid duplication. Today you may make a one-time gift or a pledge that can be paid through the year. Pledging is encouraged as it allows us to make a sacrificial gift that can be paid in installments. When you make a pledge, you will receive monthly reminder statements until your pledge is paid in full. Oh, you can count on that one. You may also go online to make payments on your pledge. Please refer to the right side of the pledge envelope and check the box or write in the amount of your pledge or gift in the space provided. Pause three seconds. One, two, three, 
Go. Thank you. If you make a pledge today, you do not have to provide a payment today unless you want to do so. If you wish to include a payment now, please write the amount of the payment on the amount enclosed line. Then subtract this amount from the total pledge amount and write the balance on the last line. Please check the appropriate box on the left. If your payment enclosed is a check or a cash payment, if you want to pay your pledge by credit card or direct debit, you may go to the diocesan website or provide this information on the monthly reminder statements that you will receive once you make your pledge. If you are not enclosing a payment now, please put a zero, ooh, a zero, amount in the amount enclosed line and write in the balance to be paid on that amount line. Pause three seconds. One, two, three, go. Okie dokie. Uh, finally, on the front of the envelope, please write your name in the space provided. You may seal your envelope and place it in the offertory basket. Pause three seconds. One, two, three, go. All righty. So on behalf of Bishop Burbage and myself, and me, the Pillsbury Doughboy, but most especially on behalf of the people of our diocese who will benefit from your compassionate gift, I thank you for your pledge to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. May God bless you. See, you rose to the occasion. Ooh, good, 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 good. All right.